So Cairo Gold interview here and again with Dr. Joe Strauss. So good morning and thank you for joining us as always. Well, Appreciate for, it. For inviting me. Oh, of course. You know, um, today what I wanted to, to get into and get your, your input on is something that I've actually read in some of your books and I've heard um, Reggie Gold talk about this. And it was the idea that really if we think about chiropractic and its position, it's chiropractic here, and then the health professions are all over here. That chiropractic really isn't a health profession, and I guess it might go to the fact that based on our objective, our objective is to allow the body's innate intelligence to better express itself. And so, but by doing that, doesn't it, wouldn't it seem that we're allowing the person to be healthier if their innate intelligence can better express itself, it would seem but that person would be healthier. So I just thought I'd get your, your uh, input uh, and thoughts on whether or not chiropractic is a health profession or something different. Wow. Okay, that, that's, that's, that's quite a question and involves a lot. I think we, we need to go back to, uh, actually we need to go back to, to our, an ancient Greek word, uh, Therapeuo, which uh, which means healing in in Greek or, or or joining together, coming together. Of course, in the ancient days, most healing was as a result of uh, addressing injuries, uh, traumatic injuries, and so healing was putting putting somebody back together, uh, healing a, a spear wound or a, right. a sword wound or uh, a broken bone or something like that and so that's where the word therapeutic comes from and okay. i mean I mean to heal and so uh of course we don't particularly like that the the, uh, the the word that has come from that which is therapeutic which is not what chiropractic is but i think chiropractic meets the the original intent of that word meaning to bring together and mm -hmm. what we bring together is just just two things the material part of the body and the uh immaterial part of the body the innate intelligence of the body and the and the matter and so we bring those back together by correcting an interference between the expression uh, of of the matter or the intelligence through the matter and so mm -hmm. that's 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 the therapeutic approach now when you go back to uh if we go back we can move up uh, uh, a few thousand years to uh, to present time we we look at the um the history of our profession with regard to state laws, and it was it was clear that the um, those people who, who originally made the state laws didn't want to uh, have chiropractic uh, mixed up with uh, or confused with therapies uh, mm -hmm. or or medical procedures, and so they um, they 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 separated the two. And in fact, in in the, the original uh, laws that that, ha that licensed chiropractors, uh, chiropractors were restricted from from uh, taking care of certain medical conditions. Uh, chiropractors couldn't take care of uh, contagious diseases or anything like that. And uh, even though uh, sometimes they did that, uh, uh, DD tended to want to take care of people with medical conditions, and and in fact they had. Uh, historical records of chiropractors taking care of people with um, flu, con yeah, contagious diseases, mm -hmm. uh, diphtheria, and uh, and uh, other other conditions like that, and and chiropractors took care of them. I think they even have some some records of the uh, the uh, the the. the uh, but what was the great uh, the influenza wasn't it influenza uh, yeah. yeah the influenza and uh, the chiropractors had a good experience with people with who had influenza what chiropractor was doing was just allowing a, a person with influenza which was a medical condition to uh, to uh, express more of their innate intelligence and when they did that people with influenza some people with influenza got better and right. of course some people did not uh, depending upon the uh, what we say in chiropractic today would be the limitations of matter of the body. So 
people did have the ability to heal themselves. And I think it was the uh, this Spanish flu it was in, in the, the one that occurred in the, in that uh, period of time. Right. So uh, chiropractors have had experience with that. As a result, chiropractors tended to try to take care of people with a lot of different conditions. And in fact, uh, uh, and that's how the chiropractor got to be claimed to be a cure all, which was something that uh, that uh, we suffered with that yeah. stigma for many many years until such time as 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 a profession we decided well well we can't cure every disease and uh, and then we of course got to the point where we said well let's let's talk about the ones that we can cure and uh, that's where I think we made a mistake yeah. and uh, of course in in the chiropractic uh, we recognize that uh, that as objective chiropractors that we recognize that our objective is not to cure any disease that it's the body that cures itself and that's what really what or ther the word therapeutic or therapeutic oh, mm -hmm. came from in the ancient greek was was the fact that they realized that uh, you know if a person if that spear wound wasn't too too great that the the, the person would heal themselves and sure. their body would heal itself and so uh, that's where the 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 idea and I think that the idea of health and wholeness, uh, which some chiropractors have talked about, uh, that had had its background from that that idea that the body does heal itself. And I think that's what we, the basis for what we, we, we teach in chiropractic is that it's the innate wisdom of the body that, that does the healing. Our job is just to make sure that that innate intelligence expressing itself as fully as possible right so i guess what i had heard thinking to this um hearing reggie at one time speak he was saying how because our objective is not really to make a person healthier that is a maybe side effect of what we do right because that by allowing the body's innate intelligence to better express itself well we would assume a person's body is going to function better as a result of that to some degree whether we can observe it or not but because I think he was saying our objective, and correct me if I'm wrong, this is just, maybe we can clarify this point, because our objective is not to make the person healthier per se, then therefore we are not a health profession. Is that correct? Or what do you, well, your thoughts? Uh, again, that, that, that depends on how you define health. If you define health as, as the union of the intelligence and the matter, uh, then obviously, uh, I, I would say we're probably the only health profession because yeah. we're the okay. only people who, whose concern is with reuniting the intelligence and the matter together, uh, mm -hmm. where most people are just interested in treating the effects or treating the symptoms yeah. or relieving the symptoms. Uh, so we are really the, the only health, health profession. If yeah. you look at health being from that original decade, definition of bringing gotcha. together or uniting the intelligence and the matter then, mm -hmm. then we are in fact the only health profession uh, but you know health has had come, come up with a a, a different uh, definition yeah. definitions change over a period of time right and, right uh, and the definition of health and what people's understanding of health is for most people understanding of health is you know if you take something feel better now you're you, and you weren't you didn't feel good yes. before. You feel better now. Then you're healthy, and of course that that's a not the, no. the idea of health that we have. And so that goes again to the point of making sure that we as chiropractors, when we say health, that we educate the person to what that really means, and so that when we say it, they're thinking the same thing, and they're not thinking when we say health. If they're thinking it means the alleviation of symptoms, we're going to have trouble. So it's important then. And we clarify with our practice members what it is that health is and we say that your body is going to be healthier by having uh, the innate intelligence of your body better expressed. So it goes back to one of the things that I think that you are a master at is that communication and making sure we're on the same page with our practice members. That's correct. And, that, and that's exactly uh, where the whole issue is with, with chiropractors. We have to make people realize that we don't get sick people well. Mm -hmm. It's the innate intelligence of the body gets gets that individual a well, and it's it's the body that does that, not us. And right. our our job is just to make sure 
that that lines of communication are open between the wisdom that runs that body and the uh, material parts of the body. In all people, whether they're sick, whether they're healthy, whether they've got symptoms or whether they don't, people need a good nerve supply. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's the major thing that we need to convince of people of or uh, get people to understand that it's the body that does the healing, which has been doing that since uh, the first person got hit with a spear and, <laughs> and right. uh, been doing, doing it since then. Or the first person who fell down and, and then skinned their knee or, or, or broke a, a limb, uh, mm -hmm. they, their body has been healing itself. And we're just recognizing that and, and addressing that idea so that it's not the chiropractor that gets sick people well, it's the body that gets, gets itself well, if it can, if it has uh, the ability to do that. And I think that over a period of time, uh, our profession understood that and understood that, that it's the body that does that healing. And we got away from the idea that, uh, well, first we got, I guess we got to the point where we thought, well, if the, the, if the body can do that, then everybody can do that and uh, every person's body can do that and that's when chiropractic got the stigma of being uh, a cure-all or yeah. cure everything and right. uh, where we say chiropractic is a cure nothing it's the body that does that healing and i think that's probably the important thing that that we really need to uh, get people to understand when they come into our office that it's how how fantastic the body is you know i had i wrote a little booklet a few years back called your amazing body and actually it was it was something that a a medical medical missionary uh wrote and published and it was out of print and i just had a few dog-eared copies left and i finally I co contacted the uh the publisher and said and, and they they said yeah you can have the you can have the rights to it because i and i reprinted it and oh nice uh, and so and i changed the changed the title to your amazing body and and just talked about how fantastic the body is and it went through every system of the body from uh the dna to uh the digestive system and, right. and everything else and uh and i just uh i did I yeah. mean, thousands of these little it was like a comic book type thing uh -huh. and, uh, well i think that's such an important thing right there if we can communicate that to our practice members again what you just said right there how amazing our body is and that would hopefully enable them to again to better maybe trust their body to to, to allow it to function at its full potential and, and and realize that it has the ability to to be healthy and that it's that is our body's natural state right to be healthy and that goes to um Maybe the next thing I want to ask you about, and the importance of talking to people about what we do in terms of the positive. What I mean by that is, you know, the old analogy of you can't remove darkness from a room. The only way you do that is by adding light to it. Mm -hmm. And even though our objective is not to treat symptoms or diseases, if we want our bodies to function better and have the best ability to heal itself, we don't take things away, we add to it, and that's what the adjustments do. They add that life, that the innate intelligence of the body is better expressed so that our amazing body can do its thing. So from your perspective, again, of, of seeing thousands of people each week in your office, where do you see that fitting in, that, that importance of letting people know what we do from the positive, that we add life to the body versus removing a subluxation? You see that as being an important distinction to make with people. I, I think I think that's that's really really important distinction, and that's what um, that's what uh, separates us from every uh, therapeutic approach. They're really trying to add something to to the body to uh, restore life, and uh, we say no. That's that's not what we do. We allow the expression of intelligence through matter, which is our chiropractic definition of life to be uh, be expressed more fully, and and uh, that's that's the objective of what we do, and that's the only objective that we do. Now yeah. there are situations when people get to a point where uh, they still need something more, yeah. and that's why we we recognize uh, that need, and 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 that there's a, other professions that that do that, 
and right. that's why we are we are not uh, in that therapeutic right model ourselves. and so that would go to you know if we're adjusting to add life but if somebody has a rotten organ for back of a for lack of a better term that organ might need to be removed and so that's, again, the medical realm. They're going to remove that organ because it's poisoning the person and might cause them to die if that person chooses to do that. Whereas, again, someone comes to us, we're not removing things. We're adding, we're adding life to the body. Yeah. And if, if you know, we, we can add more life to that body, but if they've got a bad gallbladder and, and it right. just doesn't have the ability to, to heal, uh, then then it's it's not going to heal and right. uh, all and we're only going to make sure that they've got uh the best possible gallbladder they have and yeah. which may not be good enough but uh <laughs> that's that's not our job to make that determination and i think that goes back to uh the real situation in which objective chiropractic objective straight chiropractic came into being uh in the mid 70s when we decided that uh, well, I think many of the chiropractors decided, well, we need to make a diagnosis. We need to make a, a differentiation between it's something that we can address as chiropractors or something that's beyond our ability to address that. We, you know, we know that just about everybody is going to uh, uh, need uh, medical care at one time or another in their life. You know, right. maybe... Uh, maybe toward the end of their life and uh but they they still will need that medical care even even bj palmer at, at one point in his life uh, i think there was um one fellow I, I understood he was i think he was bj's chauffeur and uh, he had uh, a situation of i think he had uh, diabetes and his pancreas was not functioning like it should and, and bj said you know you need to get to a medical doctor and, and get this addressed by the medical doctor yeah. and uh, and he, and he said well i've i've lived by chiropractic and i'll die by chiropractic and uh, he, he refused to do that and of course eventually he, he died as we all will at so at one right. time or another right and and so uh, uh it's just a matter of when when you feel you need to make that determination as to what whether you need something else in addition to chiropractic now part of the problem we have in chiropractic is chiropractors have tried to say well i'm going to add all those other things and uh, even to the point now where chiropractors are trying to add uh, the use of drugs yeah uh, to chiropractic or crazy or my, minor surgery or yeah. whatever and we say well no we we recognize there is a need for those things but we also recognize that we don't do that we just make sure they've got a good nerve supply. Yeah, perfect. Now, on that subject there again, you know, we when we adjust people and that their body's innate intelligence is better able to express itself, many times good things happen. You know, they might sleep better, they might have better digestion or more energy, better relationships, more effective at work. So these things happen, of course, even though that's not the objective, they do happen. So how do we go about communicating those positive benefits of chiropractic without making it seem like that's what we're trying to accomplish. You know, we want to make sure they understand the objective. At the same time, it's exciting for people to realize that, hey, there's going to be some potential for some really cool things to happen in your body once your body's innate intelligence expresses itself better. So how do we do that? How do we make sure we don't cross that line into now maybe leading the person to believe that that's what we're trying to do for them? That makes sense. Yes, I, I, I think, and I think that's probably one of the most difficult things for a chiropractor to do is to uh, not cross that line. In other words, we say well, people are better off with a good nerve supply. That doesn't mean that uh, that uh, you know you're you're not going to have symptoms at some time. Uh, right. Of course, we we recognize that some symptoms may be may be good and uh, may not mm -hmm. necessarily be bad. Uh, and that's why we can't even make a determination whether that, the symptoms that a person is experienced are, are something harmful or something that is good. Uh, I, I remember a few years ago, I, I burnt my finger on, on something. And, uh, 
it was like I, I, I couldn't think of anything else for the next hour and a half except yeah. that finger. That was all uh, my burnt finger. Was, it hurt. Was, yeah, it was, and I, I couldn't think of anything. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't accomplish anything. Uh, I was I was just totally uh, occupied, preoccupied with the, that burnt finger. Right. And uh, and yet eventually my body did heal it, and uh, and and I was able to go on with my life. But during that time, um, I, I I I knew that my body had the ability to heal it, yes. and uh, I didn't I didn't uh, do anything for it except just weathered it. But uh, it did uh, it did prevent me from doing some things. And I think that uh, we we pe people need to realize make a decision as to when that point is that they, they need to have that symptom or that, uh, that treatment uh, addressed. Uh, I knew I needed a good nerve supply during that time, but it was actually my, my good nerve supply that was causing some of the pain. And, <laughs> right, uh, right. But I still needed a good nerve supply. Uh, and I, and I, but I knew that it would eventually resolve itself, that the body right. would resolve it. And I just had to, to wait that hour or so until, uh, well, until my body, uh, I got it, itself back to a, a normal state or as a normal as it could be having a burnt finger. And eventually it, it did blister. And, and uh, So using that kind of analogy, when you had that burnt finger, like you said, you were preoccupied. That's all you could think about for that hour or so until it finally calmed down. And so thinking like that in those terms, if a person comes into our office and they've got maybe a pounding headache, where that is all they can think about. They are completely preoccupied with this pain in their head. And we're trying to communicate to them this message of, of, of innate intelligence expressing itself better in their body. You know, again, that's a bit of a challenge. We want to make sure. So how, do, how would you go about addressing someone like that? Someone comes in your office, they are certainly preoccupied with some kind of pain. Are you going to, what do you do there? How do you address that to make sure that you're still doing, you're communicating the message without them thinking that you're doing something to treat their headache. Hmm. Well, that, that, that's really the challenge that most chiropractors have. In fact, uh, that was probably what really created, like I said, uh, objective straight chiropractic. When we said, no, we don't uh, make that determination. We don't even have the ability to make that determination. And I'm not sure that anybody has the ability to make that de determination. Uh, a person who has a, a pounding headache, uh, they're, the, they're, the, they're the only person who can really make that, uh, that, that right. uh, determination because they know what caused the headache and, and what will relieve the headache. And uh, maybe having adjustment will enable their body to normalize itself and for that headache to go away. Or maybe uh, not uh, doing whatever they were doing to cause cause yeah. that headache you know maybe their hangover will get get uh, <laughs> resolved uh, right. if they get a good night's sleep uh or whether they've got uh, a, a brain tumor that that needs to be medically yeah. addressed and since we don't have the ability to make that determination um then we decide as as objective straight chiropractors that we're not going to take it upon ourselves to make that determination. Right. And I think that's what separated uh, the chiropractor, the objective chiropractors from um, the traditional chiropractors yeah. back in the, uh, in the mid seventies. And that's when the uh, organization uh, yeah. developed uh, that, that we now call objective chiropractic today. And it was at that, at that point in time saying, well, we won't make that determination over Traditional chiropractors were saying, "Oh well, uh, when they they realize that we can't cure or relieve the symptoms of everything, we just have to make a determination." They said, "Of yeah. which one we can we can do?" And we've found that you know I've seen that most chiropractors um, have made that determination, and it is and it is kind of lowered what we could do to a little bit of. Uh, we can just take care of people with bad backs and stiff necks, right. which is what most people associate with chiropractic now. Yeah, I guess because uh, chiropractors seem to have uh, some um, a tremendous amount of success with people with bad backs and stiff necks, 
so unfortunately that's what we uh, that's what we've gotten stuck with yeah. and uh, and in our and our uh, broad area of of expertise has has dwindled down to that so that uh, you know i've had people say to me uh, oh you know when, when they find i'm a chiropractor they say oh you know what, what can you do for my bad back or what can you do for my stiff neck and uh, then i then i have to explain to them well that's really not what chiropractic is all about right and if you've got a, a verbal subluxation in your spine it's interfering with the function of your nervous system regardless of whether you have a pain in your back or pain in your neck right. or no pain whatsoever whether you feel fine you still need to have have yeah. your spine checked uh just like you know, we talked about the last last time about the people who have nutrition uh, nutritional yeah. problems they, they still need to have good yeah. nutrition even yeah. if they if they have no uh, symptoms of right uh, of uh, some some medical medical condition caused by a lack of lack of proper nutrition they still need to have have that nutrition and so a chiropractor will get into nutrition and say well we're going to treat your your uh, medical problem with with medication with uh, or with uh, uh, drugs not or not drugs but uh, nutritional supplements and uh, that's not what that's not what we're about so there's a difference between giving a uh, making a person uh, take a supplement because they uh, have a medical condition that's therapeutic or people taking uh, supplements because they need uh, they need that kind of that, that vitamin C or vitamin right. B or whatever it is. There's a difference between that. It's the objective that yeah. has the that makes makes the difference. Right. And and we say as chiropractors, we don't need we don't know what what you need, what what your body well, needs. If you if you think you do, uh, if you want to find out what your body needs, then you need to go to a nutritional expert or right. somebody who's in that area. Our expertise is in the area of correcting for people's subluxations and and that's so we'll check you and see if you need yeah need subluxations corrected and if you do we'll we'll take right. care if you need nutrition uh expertise to, then you're going to have to go to a and yes. a nutrition expert right it's, it's funny a, because there's been some chiropractors i know who have who have justified nutrition almost in the same way, it's it's not the same, but they, they have at least presented it this way, that it's just like chiropractic where everybody needs a good nerve supply, no matter what the situation. So they then say, well, everybody needs these kinds of supplements because it's just good for overall health and well-being. And so then they've incorporated it into chiropractic almost under the same basis for adjusting somebody. And I, I just, it's one of those, I'm not sure how that happened and I'm not sure where that that's come from, but just that just popped in my mind as you're talking about nutrition, that that is a reason some chiropractors have actually incorporated nutrition because they say, well, I'm not giving this to treat a symptom or disease. It's my objective to give this to everybody who comes into my office because everybody is better off with this thing, mm -hmm. this supplement than not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's, that's how, <laughs> Chiropractors get into other areas, and of course, uh, getting starting in that point and moving moving from that point, we've uh, we've gotten to the point now where uh, chiropractors have said, "Well, you know, people maybe need this drug or that drug, or maybe they need uh, some yeah. other procedure done." And and while I incorporate that, and so that's that's kind of the slippery slope that we've yeah. gone uh, when we've when we've taken upon that objective, the idea of of treating a person uh, rather than uh, addressing the interference in the nervous system, knowing that everybody needs a good nerve supply, but they may need something else. And right. the desire to address that something else is what uh, starts us down that slippery slope, uh, right. which, is, which is going to uh, lead us into the, uh, into the area. Right. Of One of my early mentors in chiropractic was uh, Eddie Cohen. And I remember him saying how, his line was that human beings have an amazing ability to, to rationalize or justify anything. 
And that's mm-hmm. what I think we get with things like that. They somehow rationalize it or justify it in their mind that, well, everybody needs these supplements, so I'll do that. Or everyone needs muscle relaxants, so I'll, I'll do this or whatever it might be. And we just justify these things, even though they really don't make sense. They really don't have a place in what we do. We have an ability to justify it or rationalize it in some way. You know, so, you know, um, I ahead. remember speaking at a, at a uh, chiropractic college once, and I said, you know, what we need to do is determine whether I- individuals uh, have uh, an innate intelligence in their body. And I said, that's, that's a test that you can do uh, with a 25 cent mirror. You just <laughs> hold it up to a person's nose, and if there's a little condensation on there, that means they've got an innate intelligence. That means they need to have their spine checked to yeah. see if they have subluxations. Exactly. Not. And uh, that that's that's where we that's where we begin and that's where we end. Yeah. And uh, if they uh, if they don't if they have a if they don't have any there's no condensation on that mirror then uh, they don't have an innate intelligence. Yeah. And I mean that means you should uh, uh, adjust them anyway. <laughs> yeah. Well, give it a try. What the heck? <laughs> yeah. I remember uh, a chiropractor t- was talking to me. And he said he was so proud of himself because he was. Um, he was given the opportunity to go to a, a hospital and, and be on the staff at a hospital. And, uh, and, they, and he, he was doing rounds with somebody and they, they had a person who just died. And he said, well, maybe I, you know, can I check this person's spine? And said, no, you can't do that. You know, that, that wouldn't be, that wouldn't be uh, appropriate for you to, to do that. And that right. was when he, he said, you know, I, I kind of realized, well, <laughs> what am I going to do? hurt them yeah, right. <laughs> if, they're already, if, they, if they're already dead according to the medical determination uh so that was when i decided that's not what i want to do oh that's, that's funny was, uh, taking care of people and and so uh, that's when he, he left that uh, that idea and, and good <laughs> so you know i want to go back to something you were mentioning earlier and it's it's an obvious thing that most people associate chiropractic with neck aches and back aches they think that's you know, what chiropractors are for, the general public anyway. Mm-hmm. And I think part of it is obviously because that's what we've told people as chiropractors. We've educated them. Not, not, I don't want to say we as you and I, but other chiropractors have, of course. But also I think it's just a logical assumption people make. And this is where it comes back to us educating people. So if you had a person who maybe, well, let me put it this way. If a person has a foot problem, they go to a foot doctor. If they've got a knee problem, they go to the knee doctor, the orthopedic surgeon or whoever. So if they have a back problem, because we're working there, just like the foot doctor works on the foot, the eye doctor works on the eye and on and on and on. We as chiropractors work on the back. So I think people just make the logical assumption, well, you must be back doctors, which is where it comes into our responsibility then to make sure we properly educate them why we're working on the back. And I think that's a a simple thing that gets overlooked by chiropractors that we're not working on the back to make your back feel better. We're working here because this is how we access the nervous system to allow your body's innate intelligence to better express itself. So I think there's like a, a built in bias, so to speak, because that's where we do our work. So people would make, if I didn't know anything about chiropractic, I'd make that logical assumption Well, they must be because they're always working there. So it kind of makes sense. So that's where we need to do a better job of educating people as to why we're working on the back. Yeah, it, it's ironic that you know you can you can stick a pin in a person's anywhere in a person's body, and and you can access their nervous system. So yeah. that's that's what we do is is access the nervous system. We access because there's one place that we have found where there's a, there can be an interference of that nervous system, and that's at the spinal level uh, due to a verbal subluxation. Now there may be other places too, but uh, we can't access. That's not our. It's not our area of expertise. Uh, if a person has a interference in some other area of their spine, but the area that we do address is where that interference lies at the vertebral level, and that that keeps us busy enough because everybody has a, a nervous system, and if they're alive and uh, they need to have their spine checked to make sure there's no interference in it, whether they need anything else or everything else. Uh, is is not uh, is not the issue. The issue is: Do they have an interference in their nervous system, and uh, can we 
locate, analyze, and, and address that interference. And we have found that we do as chiropractors and that there's nobody else that's really addressing that area of the, of the nerve system. Mm -hmm. uh, and most people don't even recognize it as a, as a problem area. They recognize if they've got a pain in their back or they get some pain in their neck or somewhere, somewhere else. And uh, their first, first uh, effort is to try to relieve that pain uh, rather than to correct the cause of, of that problem. And we don't even know whether that's what's causing that problem uh, or not. And that's why we don't make a, a differential diagnosis. And that's like I said, what, what really separated the profession back in the, in the mid seventies when we decided that, well, we, we, we will just take care of that, uh, the objective correcting of the people's subluxation, not to get rid of the, the uh, pain in the back or the pain in the neck or pain anywhere or get rid of yeah. anything, but simply because a person needs to have a good nerve supply and we're no yeah. only one doing that. So uh, we have you know, 200 million potential people out there who, who need to have chiropractic care, uh, yeah. regardless of whether they have anything or nothing at all. And yeah. I think that most chiropractors need to uh, emphasize that to the people that come into their office. And uh, if they did, then they probably would not have to worry about uh, constantly having a turnover of people. Uh, yeah. their, their practice would just continue to grow if they got that message across to people. Now that that needs to be uh, that that message needs to be conveyed to people. And the, the better we convey it to people. Uh, the, the more successful we'll be right. at, at what we do without getting into any other area of, so, of, of, hill, of the health field. So with you and now in your practice, you of course had an orientation. So that was one way that you conveyed this message. How else did you convey that message to people um, in your office? <clears throat> Basically, um, I just, well, I, I had an orientation and then a lay lecture, which was was a a group thing that I did uh, one one night a week. And uh, <clears throat> the orientation first, the person comes. That's their first visit to your office. Yeah. Then yeah, actually, they would watch the little video uh, that that I that I produced, and uh, and then uh, and then they would get that orientation. And, okay. Uh, and then I and then I would do once a week the uh, the lay lecture, uh, gotcha. which which kind of uh, was was more involved. Yeah. And uh, which um, I put a clip of I put a clip of your lay lecture up on the Cairo Gold Facebook page off of I got it off of YouTube, so that's up there for people to watch. <laughs> that was a very young me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's awesome too. <laughs> I think yeah, I think I just I did I had that lay lecture and I just put uh, put a clip of it uh, you know, on YouTube. Yeah, it's great. And, and uh, do you have the whole thing? Um, yeah, I think I, I think I do have the whole thing. And, well, I would uh, love to see that. That'd be a great thing to share with people. Okay, I don't, if you um, if you feel like sharing it, of course. Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. Because it really hasn't changed that much, you know. In fact, I had a little sign on my um, <clears throat> on my downstairs on, on the on the soffit where the heating system for downstairs was, and uh, it was a, a a BJ Palmer saying, which says, "You never know how far-reaching something you may say, think, or do today will yeah. affect the lives of millions tomorrow." Uh, and so uh, every 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 day when I went every night when I went down there, uh, I think I did the the uh, lay lecture like one night a week. Every night I went down there, uh, that was that. So I take a look at that and uh, and that that would remind me of of the nice. of of getting that message across to people. Yeah. And I think that uh, we need to do that as chiropractors to explain to people what we do what we don't do, uh, what chiropractic is, is all about, and how fantastic the human body is. And mm -hmm. so there's, I think there's, there's, there's different points that, uh, that people need to understand. And uh, that's why what, what you're doing here 
is is so uh, great and so important for for chiropractors to understand because uh, we seem to have less chiropractors who are really understanding that whole idea of what we do and how fantastic this body is and how it has the ability to to work better with with a good nerve supply and yeah. uh, and that uh, that's that's our role and our objective and that's our the basis for what we do as a profession. Awesome. So I, I kind of got you off of track there. So you got your orientation. They, or they watch the video orientation weekly lay lectures. And then how about visit to visit? Are you, obviously you're, you're talking about chiropractic. Do you give information like have handouts, things like that were available in your office? I, I, I wrote some little uh, pamphlets. In fact, uh, I, 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 did, I wrote these pamphlets about, about chiropractic and not, not to, to get people to uh, understand what chiropractic is, but to take them a little further along mm. in, their, in their understanding of chiropractic. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> a, a young chiropractor in my area uh, who is one of my best friends, he, uh, he he started to use some of these, and then he uh, he gave them to another uh, chiropractor who was in his area, and this guy began to produce them. And oh. uh, and uh, his his name was Ted Corin, and ah. and, he, and he produced the whole series of them. Then he got into well, chiropractic can help people with this condition and that condition, yeah. and uh, I think he kind of got a little off the track. But uh, that that was that was my original thing was to produce these pamphlets to get to get people to understand a little bit more as they go along not to get them to understand what care to, to to give them an introduction to chiropractic but to get them to understand what it is in other words continuing education yeah. and uh, there's some people who who have done that uh, probably even better than me and of course the busier you get in practice uh the less time you have to uh, be able to do this on a on a continuing basis, and right. uh, that's something I always felt that I wanted to do more, and yeah. uh, that's I, I started to write more, and and, uh, and I even wrote a couple of books for lay people uh, mm -hmm. to understand more about chiropractic. Yeah, awesome. And so um, I think that you know, going back to uh, and maybe we'll we'll finish up on this point here. You know, earlier I mentioned you know the person comes in with the the pounding headache. They're preoccupied <laughs> with that. And I think the key thing here is, and what you have done so well, is because you're so grounded in the philosophy, those things don't take you off course. Whereas a person who maybe isn't as grounded in the philosophy, in an effort to please the person and out of the goodness of their heart, they want the person to feel better. Now, all of a sudden, they start maybe saying things differently because they've been taken off course by this person in front of them with this really horrible headache. And you are so grounded because you're immersed in it again. You, you're you speaking about it every single week in your office. You were, you have the, the BJ quote there to help you get your mind in the correct state as you go down to give your talk. You're constantly writing things. And so I think that's so important for me to hear, but everyone else listening to hear, the importance of always staying connected to the philosophy so you can stay on track and so that you don't get taken off course and become better at communicating the message as you've done. That that's exactly right, and and I think that the, the problem is that most chiropractors um, either get lazy or uh, get too busy. And I remember uh, Reggie Gold once said, uh, <clears throat> you know, I he said some told said said to him, I I used to do lay lectures, um, and he said then then I. Uh, then I, do, then I got so busy in, in, in taking care of people in, in the office that I really don't have time to do the light lectures anymore. And Reggie said, well, don't worry about it. He said, you will have time. <laughs> Again, <laughs> <eventually."> <laughs> and I kind of, I kind of didn't, that didn't register with me right away. And then I realized yeah. what he was saying was, well, you, your practice will, will fall off because yes. you don't, uh, you don't uh, can, can, can convey that to people on, yeah. on a regular basis. And I, and I thought, well, that was that was such, that was such a, a, a <laughs> important thing. And I think that that you know, it's so easy for people to distract us 
with, with from the message uh, that we need to constantly uh, in, constantly in, in t tell ourselves and teach ourselves and reteach ourselves and talk about it and write about it and speak about it mm -hmm. uh, that uh, to get people to understand it uh, that we need to to convey, convey our, that to ourselves and that's why looking at that little epigram on my uh, downstairs room as right. I walked down every day was to remind me how important it is to explain to people what I do and yeah. what I don't do and that, that this is not uh, a substitute for or uh, something that uh, is going to treat a medical condition or address a medical condition but it's something yeah. every person needs uh, right. in their in their uh, life, and yeah. uh, and that's what we do as as chiropractors. And I think we need to uh, constantly convey that to ourselves. Now, that comes about by talking about it, writing about it, and uh, and getting people to understand what it is. And that's yeah. and that's really the, the 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 gist of what we do as yeah. as chiropractors and the importance of what we do and. Uh, and I think that, that that's being lost by so many chiropractors uh, because they've either had drawn uh, drawn away from it, or they have just stopped talking about it, and uh, or talking about something else uh, that uh, and and that that and gets them off yeah. of the of the message. Right. Well, you've uh, created and set a great example for all of us to follow in terms of making sure that we all stay grounded in the philosophy and keep reading, reading your books. I think for someone watching this, I would personally say, get Joe's um, pivot review books. It's a good place to start. You can just take little segments each day, read it. They're like a page or two and they're just powerful little, little bits there to keep you focused. And of course get all of his books, but if you want to start with something, I think that'd be a good place for a chiropractor to start so they can each day read one of the uh, articles that are in there and then start writing and communicating the message to people. So, um, so thank you, Joe, again, for, for setting the standard and, and creating a great example for all of us to follow. We appreciate you.